In this video, we are going to learn about scatter plots and trend lines. Positive correlation on a scatter plot is when one set of values increases and the other set tends to increase as well. So I'm going to draw a trend line and I'm going to just show you that the trend line has to be straight. It should go directly in the middle of all the points. You don't have to connect every point. You don't even have to connect a point. Just go straight through the middle. Um, and it's going up. So this is known as a positive correlation, just like it would be a positive slope up from left to right. A negative correlation is one set of values decreases, increases, and the other set tends to decrease. So I'm going to draw my trend line. I'm going to try to go through the middle of all the points. And that looks pretty good. So that goes down from left to right. And that's a negative trend, a negative association. For no correlation, the values show no relationship. So it's very difficult to draw a trend line. And a matter of fact, you can't draw a trend line because there is no trend. So when the values show no relationship, that means the dots are all over the, the I should say points all over the place. And that means that you can't predict another value that's going to happen because there is no trend. So a scatter plot question could be something like this. It says that a scatter plot was constructed on the graph below and the line of best fit was drawn. And it's asking you what the equation of the, this line of best fit is. So the equation of any line is y equals mx plus b. m being the slope, b is the y-intercept. So you need those two values to get the equation of the line. So I'm going to start with the easiest one, which is the y-intercept, your initial value. So that is your B, and 25 is your y-intercept. Now we have to get the slope. We get the slope using the rise over run formula, and you connect two points, two points that have whole number coordinates. So I'm going to use the y-intercept, and I'm also going to use the point that they gave to us right here. So just be careful when you're counting. So it goes x, the x values go up by 1. So that's traveling up by uh, to the right 1. And then the rise, which is the y, goes by 5. So you notice that it goes from 25 to 30. So it's not 1. It looks like 1, but it is 5. So my rise is 5, and my run is 1. So my slope is 5. So now I can put together my equation of the line, which is y equals mx plus b. The M is 5, and the B is 25. So 4 is my answer. Remember, when you pick points, it has to, you can't be the, this point right here. It has to be a point that is on the trend line. So you can't pick random points off the trend line because you're getting the equation of the trend line. This question is a little bit more difficult because uh, the trend line is not drawn for you. So you're going to have to draw the trend line, and then you have to get the equation of your trend line. So the first question, it says, what, what kind of correlation do you see in this scatter plot? I see lines that are going, the points that are going down from left to right. So anything that goes down from left to right is a negative correlation. So now they're asking us to draw a trend line. So I'm going to start up here, and I'm going to try to go through the center of all of the points, just like that. Now you have to search the line, your trend line, for a good point to use. And a good point would have whole number coordinates. So I'm going to pick this point right here. I'm making a point on my trend line, and then I'm going to pick this point right here and make another point on my trend line. Now, to get the slope, I'm going to draw my triangle. 
So first I have to get for the equational line, I have to get y equals mx plus b. That's the equation. M being the slope and b is the y-intercept. So let's focus on b. That's your y-intercept. That's your starting point. Your initial value is 700. So I drew my triangle already for the slope. And since I went from 500 to 400, I put negative 100. Went down, the rise is actually a negative 100. My run is 1, 2, 3, 4. And the x values are going by 1, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's why I'm counting by 1s. So the slope, rise over run. My rise is negative 100. My run is 4. So my, flow, my slope is negative 25. When I put this together in the equation of a line, it's negative 25x plus 700. So the equation of my trend line is a negative slope, negative 25x plus 700. So the next question says, use your trend line to determine how many moose would remain if there were only four wolves, visually first, and then algebraically. So first we're gonna use our trend line. So I'm gonna go up to four, this is four wolves, and I'm gonna draw a dotted line up and then over. So basically, oh, that's approximately weight 590 or close, very close to 600. So I'm going to say, according to my trend line, I'm going to say that it would be 600. Now, algebraically, you would have to use your equation. So instead of the x, I'm going to substitute the amount of wolves that they, that they said. They only said four wolves. So I'm going to substitute that in and then add 700 because that's what my equation said. So if we have negative 100 plus 700 equals 600. You can see that visually using my trend line, I have this almost the same number. It's like maybe I could have said that was 590, but it's close. And the using algebraic means, using the equation that I made up according to my trend line, it matches up at 600.